family businesses make up a quarter of the British economy, turning over more than a trillion pounds a year. But a thousand small firms are going bust every single month. Sorry. For God's sake, do something. For family firms, it's not just profits, but relationships on the line. This family business has actually ruined our family. You know, I can't imagine how you feel about it because I feel sick. I don't know if it's ever going to get better. You must see some hope. Otherwise, let's not bother with this. No. I'm Alex Polizzi. I grew up in a family business that expanded from one small cafe to become an empire worth billions. Now I'm trying to bring six family firms empire. back from the brink. He's just used to getting his own way, and I'm used to getting mine. This week, a family that's spinning out of control. I'm going to have to call it a day. Need my help to start making some serious dough. It's all so worthy. It's all so bloody flour, isn't it? Just forget about the windmill. Think about the things that are working, or we're going to go bankrupt. If the site turns into a tea room, I don't want to work here. Before their windmill dream is ground to dust. I feel a bit like everything we've done there has been wrong. This isn't your life. This isn't your family. This isn't your home. Just stop behaving as if it is. I'm on my way to a historical tourist business in Norfolk that has hit rock bottom. Three years ago, Mark and Lindsay Abel sold their house and sank their life savings into a dream to run Denver Mill, Norfolk's last working windmill. This is the biggest machine you'll ever go in. And it is a machine. We are inside a machine. Their ambition was to mill flour and turn it into bread they could sell on site. It sounds a bit, you know, hippie, but I think this windmill found us, not that we found the windmill. But their utopian dream has turned into a nightmare. There's something going dreadfully wrong. We have no life. I used to have one, apparently, but I can't remember it. There's no just this. Everything we have in the world is here. We have nothing. We have nothing in the bank. Everything's here. Despite not paying themselves a wage, Mark and Lindsay's future now hangs by a thread. If we fail to make a living here, this will go. And when it's gone, that's the end of it. And just when it seemed it couldn't get any worse, disaster struck. There was just bits of, bits of sail and things just falling. And we just looked up and we both just shook our heads and said, well, that's it, you know. That's the end, the end of the business, you know, the end of everything. Nothing would be here if the mill wasn't here. The tea shop couldn't survive on its own, the shop couldn't survive on its own. It's all part of the same thing. It, it is like a loss of something. The unique selling point of Denver Mill has always been that it was Norfolk's last working windmill. Three weeks ago, that was true. However, it's going to cost a lot of money to replace them. And at the moment, the family don't know whether it's going to be possible at all. But the business was broken before the sales came off. Despite three years of hard graft, they haven't made a penny. If that doesn't change, then this place could close in a matter of months. Having spent years working in the voluntary sector, Lindsay is now in overall control of the site. Hiya, I'm looking for Lindsay. Hello. Hello. Lovely to meet you. And you. We're very pleased you're here. Thank you. I'll I'm just come very round. pleased I'm here. So how many people can you serve at a time here? At busy times, we're looking for about 25 to 30 at the most. But we have an outside area as well, and quite often in the summer that's quite a good area because it sort of gets people outside. You also sell your own bread here. You make sandwiches from your own bakery bread, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, well the idea is that we mill the flour here, yeah. we make our bread, yeah. and then people can take a loaf home or they can use it to cut up for the sandwiches so people can actually get to taste the mill, so as to speak. OK. Let me take you to see Mark. What goes up must come down. Lindsay's husband, Mark, has a background in mechanical engineering, but now spends all his time milling flour. Hello. Mark, this is Alex. Hello. 
What are you up to in here? This has been referred to as my other woman because I spend too much time I with I thought it. the other woman was the engine around no, the back. Yes. Oh, I see. You've got two other women. I have. <laughs> with the main mill out of action, Mark has only two small motorised mills on which to pursue his love affair with flour. How do you know about all this stuff? As far as the engineering side goes, I've worked with this sort of equipment all my life. Yeah. As far as the milling side goes, through trial and error, inspiration and sheer raw skill. <laughs> <laughs> not, to <laughs> not, not to puff yourself up. Well, no. <laughs> OK, so this is your arena and obviously your passion. You have that slightly crazed look of a man who's in his <laughs> element. But I'm here to try and make sure that your yeah. business makes more money. So yeah, what we need to quickly identify is which bit of this business, of the, of the varied aspects yeah. of this business, should we concentrate on? That's yeah. where hopefully your objectivity will be able to identify which streams they are. Does that mean you're not sure? <laughs> <laughs> Charming as they are, Mark and Lindsay don't strike me as natural entrepreneurs. Let's go. So I'm allowed to go and have a look about, Yes, I? yes, yes, help yourself. Yeah. And then I'll come back, because I obviously want to ask you lots of questions about okay. money. Oh, dear. <laughs> you are the person to ask about that, are you not? Well, I believe you're the managing director. Oh, absolutely. Good, <laughs> good, good, fantastic. My first stop, the windmill itself, that the family charge a couple of quid to enter. Quite interesting, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Which, despite owning a bakery, I'm not. Next door, they run something I would be interested in, though. Baking classes. But the room is far from what I'd expect. Ah. Madness. Madness. They call it madness. I'm not entirely sure why there's a bicycle or a scooter in here. Madness. They call it madness. And I definitely don't think there's anything witty or amusing about that. Worse still, it's grubby. Why would you do that? Why would you have someone see that you keep your stuff like this? I hate the whole disordered aspect. I can already tell this isn't a professional outfit. The on-site gift shop takes the chaotic approach to a new extreme. Madness. They call it madness. I find it very confusing in here. The family's home milled flour sits side by side with tourist tad of the lower sort. I find it all a bit depressing. I would love to know who does the buying for this because I think they're very confused about what they're trying to achieve here. Really unattractive and generic notelets and name stuff, which I honestly I don't think has any place here. These cheap toys retail for peanuts, and the markup is tiny, but they're filling up almost all of the shelf space. Rural food businesses all over Britain are making money because the customers are prepared to pay a premium for locally sourced goods. All this plastic is just bad business. One of grand cufflinks next to clotted cream fudge. How is that a good sales technique? One person who should know how things are run is daughter Sally, who came to the mill a year ago to develop the business, but has caught the milling bug from her dad. What's your gut feeling about what's wrong with it here? What needs to be improved more than anything else? Finance-wise, I feel like we're not looking to make large amounts of profit here. I don't think that it's going to be very easy to make large amounts of profit. Or that's not been the plan, means that we're looking at smaller figures. And at the moment, because people aren't controlling the books closely enough, it's very easy just to fritter these little, you know, little bits. When you're only looking for a small sum of money in the first place, it's very easy for it just to but disappear. But why, why do you think it wasn't going to make lots of money? I suppose and because seems... that's what Mum and Dad told me, to be honest. I suppose because when they came in, their business plan didn't involve making a large amount of money. No, it probably it didn't about... involve spending all their money No, either. it certainly didn't. Do you have any handle at all on where you're making money in this business and where you're losing it? Not effectively, no. Spoons and cutlery, just help yourself to there, sir. On paper, the only bit of the business showing any potential is the tea room, run by Sally's boyfriend, Duncan. What do you think you're doing right here? Oh, I don't really know. We're doing a, we're doing a bit right, but there's a lot we can work on. So tell um, me... I know, but What's I'd like right? to know, yeah, tell me your strengths, what you think the strengths are. The strengths are. are the quality ingredients we actually use. We try to go for quality, not quantity, to get people to come back again. 
Do you know how much you spent? I mean, do you know how much a cake takes to produce and what you then cost it out We have our costings, yeah. We yep. have costings. Costings are all done upstairs. So you're pretty confident about your costings? That's what I'm I wouldn't asking. say I'm confident. I would say they could probably be done better. Yeah. But uh, whether it's by me or somebody else, I don't know. Sorry, d don't let me stop you serving this lady. Even if Duncan runs the tea room well, he'll always struggle if he doesn't get more involved in the books. Thank you very much. The family are juggling a lot of balls, a shop, a cafe, a mill, a bakery, as well as events and holiday cottages. Every part of the business has its problems, but they're made even worse by another fatal flaw. The biggest thing, as far as I can see, the elephant in the room that everyone knows is there and no one is discussing, is the fact that no one seems to know what's making the money, where the money's being spent on, whether the profit margins are right on every item they sell, um, why they're not making more of a profit. There has to be an answer buried deep in those figures somewhere, and I just need to find someone to lead me to the answer. And that's a trail that leads directly to Lindsay. I've got tea room sales, mm -hmm. tea room purchases there, mm -hmm. which would seem to suggest that uh, yeah. you've made 40, more or less 40 yeah. grand. But then here, I've got a different price on tea room purchases. Well, that is peculiar. And then if you include the wages, then that shows that the tea room over the course of a whole year didn't actually make you a penny. No, it doesn't actually surprise me. Doesn't it? No, it doesn't. How is the pricing worked out in the tea shop? The pricing, I... <sighs> so let me see purchases. Yeah, again, I, I'm afraid I don't understand those at all. I don't know whether they take it all as a game. I think they won't find it a game when they are walking away from there with £100,000 less of their own money and nothing to show for it. I think that will be pretty depressing, actually. Hello, love. Hello. You got out. I did, yeah. In one bit? I did, yeah. And? It was... It was quite tough. Yeah. It was quite tough. I do feel a bit, ooh, now. I just want to burst in tears and have a little I cry. I can see. <laughs> Darn. I stick my head in the sand about the figures because I think that if I know them and realise what a mess we're in, then, then we'll have to get out. You know, we've put a lot into this place and the thought of finding out that it's not sustainable is a scary thing. We may have to say, well, that's it. You know, we're going to have to call it a day. After a difficult evening, I've called the family together. Their ethics are getting in the way of their existence. If the Ables are going to find a way out of this mess, it's their heads and not their hearts they need to start following. The first thing I have to draw your attention to is that however worthy and, and however admirable your ethos is, what it's meant is that you're living very hand to mouth, mm, which is not a comfortable that. situation. No. It isn't enough just goodwill and love and effort and hours put in. Mm. You need to be professional about this mm. stuff. What I want you to understand is that there is something very admirable about doing something well and making money out of it. And I am going to challenge you to do lots of things differently. Let's work from the black and white, from the facts and figures. It takes the sting out of every discussion. Because once you have the facts in front of you, they're quite hard to argue. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to do, but first I need to take this family back to basics to see if they know which bit of the business is actually making any money. I need to confront them with their willful lack of knowledge about the financial state of this project. I want to do that in a very immediate way, one that will have an impact visually and that will hopefully shock them into changing their ways. What we have here is 10 bags of flour, each representing 10% of turnover. I would like you to put bags into each segment to represent the percentage of the overall turnover. Okay. okay? 
We've got to have at least one bag in every section. Right, so yeah. can we put one in each section then? That one wants to go in the right. right, we've got to put a load more in cafe. Put at least two more in there. And that one's got to go oh. in the middle as well, I'd have said. So that shouldn't be there. Duncan, are you happy with this? Um, personally, I'd put that one into the cafe. Go on, then. I'm reasonably happy with that. You're reasonably happy. Yeah. What would you change? Because I reasonably happy isn't enough. I think. Yes. One, two, four. No, okay. Yeah, no. The of money no, that's right. Yeah, make. no, no. I'm happy. Really, there isn't much money sloshing about at all. I don't think that that's anything to admire. I just think that's stupid. Well, none of you are really aware of how the situation stands. Then, fifty-four percent of your turnover comes from the tea room. Right. 26% of your turnover comes from the shop, 10% comes from the cottages, mm -hmm. and the mill and the events share 10%. So, sure. can I just say, depressing as it is, you two are spending a lot of your time on something that's the tiniest right. part I of the business. I don't think it is, because if we didn't have the flour, then the tea room and the shop, well, the tea room certainly wouldn't be making so much money, because they have to have the flour to make the bread to make the cake. So, we have to look at why aren't we getting a bit of margin coming out of the mill? In saying that there's two of us spending a lot of time in the mill, it's sort of, it is the backbone to it. I agree that it's the backbone, but it's a backbone that's not going to be able to be supported. The family are more about the mill than the money. I just hope they can see they have to change to stop this site going under. I want to say that I want to say that I didn't realise until now how important it is to me the milling side of it here. What we all agreed on when we agreed on what we were going to do before this, before Alex came, was not to compromise on using our own product wherever we can because we feel that that's really important. And I feel like if we're on this site, we have a responsibility to use it as a mill in some sense. And if not, we might as well go and get a tea room somewhere else. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, I would rather just make enough money for us all to make a living and not have a lot of money and still have that windmill and still be able to stone mill than have extra money. If the site turns into a tea room and a gift shop and then the administration side of it, I don't want to work here because I've got other things I can do. That meeting this morning, a joke. Complete and utter joke. They're still concentrating on something that is never going to work. Everybody likes to work the mill and work in it. But it's a luxury, isn't it? You know, it's a three-quarter million pound luxury that's broken. They're playing millers. Mills went out 200 years ago. You know, if you can get it working, it's an added bonus. But it's not something to depend on. It's like depending on the wind blowing every day. Is that not a business strategy that's ready just to collapse? Just forget about the windmill. Think about the things that are working, or we're going to go bankrupt. And I didn't travel 600 miles to go bankrupt. Everything they say is so uncommercial. I mean, Lindsay... Sally, Mark, I mean, I'm amazed. The only person who's got a healthy business bone in his body is Duncan, and that's only so long as he doesn't have to use a computer. So, you know, I've got a few, I've got a struggle ahead to make sure that everyone understands what's involved here, but it's a struggle I will win. And the financials couldn't be any clearer. Although their hearts are in the mill, the bread and butter of this business isn't in the flour. This is a difficult message that I've got to give the family. You know, they think they're achieving a very high standard, but the very high standard they're achieving is in one solitary aspect of the business. As they keep going on about it, it's in the flour. And that is really all they've been focused on. I've got to get them to see the rest of the business and what it means to them for it all to be a success. So what I want you to now think about is the unthinkable, right? And I'm going to say it blankly. How important is the milling of flour? Extremely. For what? For your vision of yourself? For... Or the success of the business? The Do you vision think of ourselves. People... Well, so no, but well, people no, come because they, a lot of our customers come because they have the quality of our flour, which we don't have at the moment, but because of the quality of our flour. Well, and you still have customers coming and people would still mm -hmm. eat in the cafe and the coffee shop because you're doing something very good here. I'm afraid your not... sense of self-worth is so wrapped up in the flour milling thing that I think you are really ignoring at your peril 
what is the bit of the business that makes money, the cafe? But I don't think that if we didn't have our flour, which we use in our products, our bread and our cakes, which is one of the things that makes them so nice, I don't think we'd necessarily... If we were selling the same thing as everybody else around in the area, then maybe people... Darling, do you honestly think that if you go to Hayworth's or Marriages or, you know, I mean, there are lots of other... Mm. They're, they're, they're Norfolk the flour doesn't it's... taste the same, though, if you... No, it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. But a lot of it is in the skill of the baker. No, no. So, uh, you see, I think that you know, I, can't, I, can't, I don't think that's right because obviously the flavour of, our, of, a, of stone ground flour is very different from the flavour of roller milled flour. Sweetheart, I have a bakery. I, I know, know you do. This. I know exactly. So I'm saying I, I just think I think what, I know, darling. But what, you know, you have to start thinking commercially. Mm -hmm. You have a very tough decision here. You have no money in the bank. Mm -hmm. You have a bit of the business that's working. You're managing to you know to do a little bit of milling in the setup that you've got now. But is it enough to be the raison d'etre of this business? This isn't your life. This isn't your family. This isn't your home. Just stop behaving as if it is. This is a business, guys. You've got to make it work so that you have money to feed and clothe and shelter yourselves. I would like to do something with the branding. I would like to do something with the marketing. But I can't even start that until you decide what you are. Running a family business should be a pleasure. It has become a chore. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. ain't great. Mm -hmm. Can I give you words of advice from my grandfather, which I live my life by? Is never look at the bigger picture because there's no point. Solve one problem at a time with a very clear-sighted view because otherwise you dissipate your energies. So you have to do one thing, you do that one thing, you tick it off and then you move very quickly to the next one. I suddenly realised that what I have felt over this meal is almost like bereavement and I've refused to acknowledge it. I'm still refusing to acknowledge it, because if I do, I should be really upset. And I didn't realise that it affected me as much as that. I think this is why Sally was so defensive of, uh, of Alex's comments about the, the mill and the flour. At the end of the day, if Denver Mill is going to survive, they just have to be more commercially minded. They have to be more focused. They have to concentrate. They all have to be pulling in the same direction, and they have to start now. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, yeah, and I'm feeling good. So after last night's frank discussion, have the family woken up to the idea of a new way forward? I think it would be a terrible shame just to scrap everything and make us just a tea room or a cafe. But having said that, of course we need to make some money somehow, so I think we... Probably the, uh, the, the feeling I have is that we've somehow got to get the rest of it running well enough to support us being able to mill here, because I think it's really important that that happens on this site. Well, it looks like I'm slowly getting through to Sally, but is the rest of the family ready for a new direction at Denver? I think what we ought to do first thing this morning, just what we talked about in the car last night, mm -hmm. which was how we were feeling about what Alex said about the windmill. Don't know whether it's such a big deal to you, Duncan, is it? It is, but it's not my first priority, is it? I mean, my first priority is thinking, are we throwing too much time at something we can't get possibly to work at the minute? We know that we've got to get this business working. And we know that, from what Alex said last night, it gave us confidence to think that we can get it working without the windmill. So let's get the business working, get those all those other sites, these other bits really working well, in order for us to be able to be paid and for us to continue to indulge ourselves being able to use the windmill and, and having that sense of responsibility. So almost the windmill becomes a bit of a hobby that's attached to the business. We've been very focused in one direction and, I'm, and that direction is very much tied in with the milling and the product and all the rest of it. I think we need to do some more market research because there's no point going in the direction that we want to go into if our customers don't want it. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you so much for coming to help me with some market research. It looks like the family are coming round to my way of thinking. And if it's feedback they want, then I'm very happy to oblige. How are you set up for a coachload of people? Oh, my goodness. How's Duncan? 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 
Duncan, yes. can you handle a coach load of people at the moment? Ah, bring it on, no bother. Bring it yeah. on. <laughs> Be as detailed as you can. Please don't worry about hurting anyone's feelings. It's anonymous, so it doesn't matter. Is there any change you make? The menu, would you make any change? How the pricing is? That kind of stuff really interests me. Do they sell yeah, their own gel? Yeah, there was a few little yes. bits yeah. out there. Yeah, they do. Because that's what I would focus yeah, on. I'm hoping that this sample focus group can help me understand what a Denver mill trying to achieve. Is it more important for them to be milling flour that they use in their own bakery? Are they trying to be a very well established and popular cafe? Can I give you questionnaires? I want to know what people like here so I can help the family decide which way to push their business. The more information you can give me, the better. This quick straw poll showed that customers like the food and the mill products once they found them. I know that when people come to stay with me, they yeah. like to look for lo locally right. produced things and locally made things. Right. There is a very rich tourist clientele that come to Norfolk. It's very highly regarded. There's a lot of money washing about here, and I'm not sure that they're attracting their fair share of it at Denver Mill. With the Norfolk tourist industry worth two and a half billion pounds a year, I think they could make more money from their merchandise. It's time I took the mill up market. Foreman and Son, a century-old family smokehouse, developed a luxury hamper range ten years ago and haven't looked back since. It's a market that's worth a staggering £75 million a year in the UK alone. I want the family to realise they can keep their heritage and turn a healthy profit too. First of all, why are hampers a good idea? We're very much uh, a fresh food company, and that's the sort of heritage of our family business. Lots of people would buy a packet of smoked salmon from us, or they'd buy some cheese, or they'd buy some fresh meat, um, they'd buy something for their dinner party, but they wouldn't necessarily come to us for gifts. Okay, so hampers obviously gives you an extra element that you can, you can supply to people, particularly at Christmas time, but you know, throughout the year as well where they're looking for you know, a gift offering, something that's ready-made, they don't have to think about it too much, they can just buy it you know, off the shelf or out of a catalogue and you know, it's all there complete. The so. key to all this, I would suggest, is mm -hmm. sourcing stuff that people cannot find so easily independently. So find stuff that you just couldn't go to the supermarket and just pick off the shelf. Yeah. Because, you know, any idiot can do that for themselves. What you're trying to do is offer a very indulgent um, gift experience. You've bought us one of your yeah. jam jam baskets. It's just, just some local pickles, pickles actually in this one. I don't think presentation is necessarily one of their skills, and I think it's something that they all have to work on. You know, if you're going to do a hamper, you have to do it bloody well. Otherwise, just don't bother. The hamper challenge. <laughs> We've got a whole load of your products on that table over there. So I just want to see what you think makes a good hamper out of your products. I know what I'm doing. We've got a crate there and it's getting 12 bottles of beer in it and that's it. That's a mad hamper. <laughs> Last year, Foreman and Son sold 10,000 hampers. I'd love to see the mill selling their own hampers on their site and wholesaling them around Norfolk before I leave in just over a month's time. I'm interested in seeing what they think goes together, whether they have an effective theme going in a hamper, whether they can explain that theme to me, whether they've thought about the cost of the goods that they're putting in and what kind of markup they can put on it. I need them to prove they can think commercially. Contents, £25 box, don't know the price of. Got to rub his sleeves up, it's no good. Typically, they're being very random. Just and Annie be the clod clean, there you go. Apart from Sally, who unusually is very focused on what customers might be willing to pay for. I was trying to do something different and do a, a more of a, a hamper just with our baking products. We've only got a sort of strange selection of baking stuff with us, so I've kind of tried to make it representative. If I got given that Christmas morning, I'd pay for it. And I'd eat and drink a lot. Let's have a look then. Oh. I think this is a bit confused as an idea. I, I think this basically tells you what Duncan just said. This is what he would like for breakfast. And it just looks like it's all the things I like just thrown in the tray and that's it. Okay. What, what do you think? Have you costed this out in your head? No. 
Okay, because I think that's also quite important. Remember, the whole, you know, let, well, let's not mince words here. One does things to s make money. Absolutely. You next, darling. Yeah. What was the thinking behind yours? Mine was an attempt to find out our most premium products that we have in our shop. That isn't luxury food. No, it's and, not. And I don't... It's in a luxury box. And that's not luxury. Exactly. <laughs> stuff they built their business on is what they should be showcasing, isn't it? And that is not... That's not it. OK, thanks. So your thinking was here? Um, the idea is um, it's sort of a showcase of, of our product, and if somebody wants a sort of, like, you know, start-up kit to try and start making their own bread with our products, then this would be it. I love it. I mean, to me, this really... You know, this, this, this sells your brand. You know, you know that these products are all excellent products because you're producing them yourself. And part of the whole reason for doing hampers is actually to promote what you do. I was worried that Sally would let her values get in the way of creating a hamper you could make a healthy profit on. But her bread-making kit captures the essence of the mill and passes muster with the experts. You know, that looks like something you'd spend money on. That looks, you know, worth plenty, yeah. It does. It, it's very natural-looking and, you know, it says something about you. And I think that that's, you know, that, that is great. Looking at someone that has obviously expanded and, and turned, taken it to the next level, but still being able to stay so grounded and rooted in what they believe in, made me realise that you can progress and you can make money and you can um, look a little bit higher and reach a little bit higher, but still ha hold these values um, and still stand by your values and still be based on what you believe in. So, yeah, it was a real eye-opener for me. With Sally now seeing the value in adding value, she's getting stuck into some mass production with her mother. And we need to collect together tea, coffee. By creating hampers, they can expect to make 25% more money than they would if they sold the product separately. Slow down, you move too fast. You're right, Sal. You got mm -hmm. to make the morning last. Just Don't forget to put loads of that stuff in. Because they did, that's what they said, isn't it? Make sure you've got plenty of stuffing in. Is that better? Yes. No, don't like that stuff. Right. Who won the hamper competition? The hampers are unique to the mill, as they showcase their own flour. But by grouping this with other products, Sally is really tapping into the home baking market okay, that's currently this. never been this. bigger. That's it. It's what you do on mill tours. <laughs> Dad makes, I mean, Dad's glamorous assistant. <laughs> this is the beginning of what is going to soon be a huge warehouse-style factory making hampers. Mm. This is a miniature version. Looks great. I mean, fantastic. This is your, obviously, alcoholic version, mm -hmm. which looks very nice. As well as selling in their own shop, I think these hampers could be sold in bulk to big food outlets all over the county, making the mill much less reliant on passing trade. I really want us to take some of these hampers to find out if anyone would be interested in stocking them mm -hmm. in the future. Also, once we've got the costings and we work out what kind of margins we're making mm -hmm. on them, if someone does say they want wholesale, you give them a discount. I've managed to line up two meetings with Norfolk retailers that specialise in high-quality local produce, perfect for the mill. Now, the family have to convince them to buy. I've never really seen Lindsay, Sally and Duncan having to sell their product, and it's quite important that I see them in the field, as it were. Hopefully, I'll see them very confident. I know they have full faith in their product. Fingers crossed they've heeded my advice and thought seriously about their pricing. We did two sorts, OK? We did this one in a basket and we did this one in a crate. Right. Yeah. So what would this retail to me at? This one... At the moment, wholesale. Wholesale. we haven't got wholesale prices yet. I would just need to know what it was going to cost us to work out what I could reasonably retail it at. Or perhaps you might think about doing a sale or return. A lovely family, obviously trying really hard to push their product. They probably need to be a little bit more prepared when they come into a, a, a selling situation like, like just now. You know, they didn't know the price that they were going to sell the hamper at. Um, which is obviously important to me because I obviously need to know how I'm, how much I'm gonna you know how much I'm gonna sell it for. The lack of prices means they can't close what might have been a deal. The last thing I said before we left the mill to uh, to Sally and to Lindsay was to make sure that they had the costings to at least have the raw good cost, and then we could work out as it were a, a retail price and a wholesale price. We knew we were going to be asked this, 
They came very unprepared in this regard. Here we go. With one pitch left, they need to get their figures straight or today will be a write-off. This family have got to get a grip. We need those numbers and we need them now. Hello, Dad, we need prices for those hampers. Now. The prices on those hampers now. 16.50 and 23.50. In this next shop, I'd like you to go and run your own because I think that it's good that you learn to introduce yourself, to ask immediately for the person who you should be seeing, then you engage with them rather than me. Luke, is it? Hello. Hello, Luke. I'm Duncan from Denver. This nice is Lindsay you. and this is Sally. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hello, nice to meet you. We've brought some of our products in today. So what do we get in here? We get yeast in here. You get yeast. Yeah, the, the flour. The baked bread making yeah. flour, the oil, the tin, and there will be a recipe card in there. Lovely. So the retail price is? These will wholesale at about 21. OK, and then retail at? About 27, 28. So far on what you've said, you're ticking a lot of boxes which the greengrocer's business philosophy adheres to. Right, seeing your, your range of products, I would say hamper on the shelf tomorrow. I would say your flour on the shelf tomorrow. This is just one store and they need to pitch to others, but it clearly shows they have a market beyond the mill itself. I thought it was very important to show them that they do actually have the skills to do their own sales and marketing and that they just have to be brave and make some new contacts, make the effort to go on making new contacts wherever they go. realise their product could look good on other people's shelves, Lindsay is finally making sense of her own shop. Now we need to get all those units out of the way. I'm not sure where. Got that cupboard where you're standing. Hopefully, and I don't know whether this is going to work, at the end of the day, there's going to be a fantastic feeling of space and everything's going to look lovely and tidy and neat. Just move it into the middle for now. You'll be moving something over there to bring something in there to move it back over there all the time. But this is the only way we're going to be able to do it short, taking everything out of the shop. Suddenly in the back garden and bring it all back in again, which might be an idea, actually. And Sally and Duncan are tackling the terrible function room. If I there scream, is... it's because there's a spider, so don't panic. We're going to be concentrating on baking classes. We're trying to make them a bit more professional. Um, so obviously we need to make the area that they're going to use a little bit more professional as well. Thank you. I see there's all sorts of treasures up here. Just going to put things in here now that are relevant to baking. We found that in the bottom of the cupboard, the pickled albino bat. It's quite cool, in a gross kind of way. Never enough hours in a day, is there? Not for all the things we got to do. So I better get on. Chin up and all that. <laughs> In just a few weeks' time, I want to help the Ables relaunch Denver Mill as a must-see destination, not just for fans of flour, but for foodies far and wide. So I'm back to see how well they've scrubbed up. Ha-ha! Ooh, very different. Oh, I like it. I love this. I mean, that looks amazing. All your produce. Instead of hiding behind cheap toys, the mill products take pride of place alongside the best of Norfolk food. It's exactly what I would hope a rural food shop would look like. I think that you're adding value to your goods by displaying them like this. Really looks fabulous. Well, this does look very different. It looks fantastic. I'm really thrilled Good. with this. I really am. Thank you so much. I, I mean, this is definitely now somewhere that I would like to do a bakery course. Right. Um, I think it gives a very good impression of the professionalism here. I particularly and like the um, aprons. They look fantastic. Because, because we'd, we'd always planned to do that and we'd never found a space on the wall to put them. So 
No, I was really pleased to be able to get those out. If this site is going to have a successful relaunch, then the business must send out a coherent message. The mill needs a unified brand. Right, first thing I need to tackle you with. What on earth is this? Is it a wide selection of publications? <laughs> <laughs> what does it say about your brand? Does anyone know? We tried to tell, send a lot of different messages to a lot of different people. Yeah. <laughs> we need to tackle marketing. Yes. But we can't tackle marketing until we've tackled branding. No. You know, are you kind of little cosy? Are you kind of funky and, you know, bright and a bit more modern? Mm. You know, traditional? I, I don't really know what you want to be. And I think this is a central question that you have to answer for me. I think they're very confused. There isn't one thing that Denver Mill stands for, and I feel that's incredibly important. We've got a gift shop, we've got a cafe, we've got a heritage site, and we've got the milled flour. Um, and all those things have to be marketed much more cohesively, much more powerfully, so that people know what they're getting when they come to Denver Mill. Sally, Duncan. Yeah. yeah. Alex has asked us to find five things that represent Denver Windmill. I need the family to be on the same page when it comes to who and what they are. I'm going for where everybody comes here for. I'm looking for something that represents friendly and happy and family, but I can't find anything, so I'm going to find a mixing bowl. The aim of this exercise is to get the family to focus on the values they feel lie at the heart of this business, because tomorrow I want them to decide on a brand image once and for all. I bought the bowl because of the baking courses. I think people come here for the bread, they come here for the flavour, so that's one of mine. I brought a sheaf of wheat and it's Magister, which is our main wheat that we use, so that's kind of good. Spelt as it comes off the field, 10,000 years old. There's clearly a shared passion for the plough-to-plate ethos of this business. Home-milled wheat turned into great bread. Agreeing a clear vision together will make deciding on branding a lot easier. Oh, God, I'll be good, aren't we? Oh, look at that. I'm quite pleased with that. I'm very pleased with it. So are we all agreed? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. That'll be that, then. With the new day comes a new direction for the image of Denver Mill. And to help the family, I'm introducing them to David Revel, who has created brand identities for heritage sites like the Roman walls at Chester. He's been working on a selection of logos for the mill. We've come up with three different looks and, and feels for you. The first one is our classic and we were thinking the National Trust, we're thinking English heritage, we're thinking those sort of things. Then there's a middle ground, which is a little bit more, a little bit more contemporary. It's a bit more real, it's a bit more authentic. And then there's another look and feel, which is about being a bit more uh, artisan. The most important thing really is to identify of these three points of view, what we're most comfortable with. So I must say, this is really exciting. These are like the dark arts, aren't they? That we, we mere mortals are not really sure of, but it's suddenly becoming very obvious. I'm amazed that I find all three have got tremendous appeal, which I didn't see would be, didn't, I hadn't seen. She brought something out, certainly for me, straight away. I think, I think this looks too classy for us. I don't think we're quite, I like, as much as I like them, I think we're a bit more rough around the edges than that sort of, you know, that's, this is fine dining, isn't it? Which, which is, we're not, we're not there. And I think this is a sort of image that, you know, you could use on a sack. You, you could print it, block print it. Yeah. Yeah. You could. And I think which that, I love. How it can be manifest yeah. is it's so much part of the, of the brand as well. And yeah. it, can be, it can be stickers and you can be folding your flower bags down and putting the sticker yeah. on. Yeah. It's, it can, be, it can yeah. work really well in packaging. For sure. Good. Well, we've definitely, f it seems to me, I mean, not to preempt anybody, but you all seem to be more or less on the same, you know, page about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the main thing which is very appealing is that it has so many uses. I mean, that shape, that format is so easy to mm. transfer onto. Yeah. 
So, do we have a winner? I don't think it's got to be this one. Yep. That one. Yep. Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to do the right, here. Good choice. <laughs> Good. Honestly, I'm relieved that they came so quickly to a decision about a logo that they all agreed on. I wasn't going to let them leave this room until it had been hammered out. What I really wanted them to be aware of was this is, you know, once they'd left this room, the bridges are burned. There is no turning back. And so they had to commit to it wholeheartedly. And actually, I think overall they did. The family know I want to relaunch this business in just a fortnight, but I haven't told them how. I'm ready to let them in on an idea I've been working on. We do only have a very short time together now, so I'm going to push you once more. I want you to put on a farmer's market. OK. Um, and we're going to try and put on an event that really showcases Denver Mel. I'll make sure that I do as much as I possibly can to make sure that the farmer's market goes in an absolute swing. With a clear sense of their brand identity, the family make good and mend to give the whole site a much more unified feel. Yeah, no, I think they're really, really nice. I like that. Yeah. That's an eye catcher. That's good. Yes. That's good. We could be up in the clouds. It goes with our characters. Do you know what worries me? It's the fact that it says 9 a.m. so we're gonna have to get up earlier now. Well these are our new leaflets. And don't they look nice? I don't want to put them out in case the public take them. <laughs> these are mine. <laughs> We've put the prices up a little bit, not, not much, but 10p here and there. It might only be a small increase, but at least their prices are now based on fact, not fiction. They've gone up and we might make a little bit of profit on it now, which is what business is all about in my eyes. And I hope their business can now also be about farmers' markets. With over 500 regular markets in Britain, this food movement is raking in £65 million a year and I want the mill to grab a slice of this action. As well as charging stallholders a £20 pitch fee, they plan to sell their own flour, hampers and a range of speciality breads. It should also firmly place them as a centre for good food, but only if people know about it. So, the once very unbusiness minded Sally and Lindsay are about to come over all commercial. There we go, this is Studio Two. We've got a microphone set up for you both. Okay. Let's see if we can make this commercial. <laughs> when, you, when you do read it, smile. Right, okay, so do it with a smile. With yeah. a smile, yes. <laughs> A new winter farmer's market for the family is arriving at Denver Mills this December. It's more than just the finest in local produce. There's children's bread making, horse and cart rides, along with lots of fun for the whole family. There's even hot food with a warming glass of mulled wine too. Cheers! It's a real country winter treat. But back at the mill, all is not well. You can hear they've come up nicely. Lovely but they don't taste right, so they go in the bin. Uh, that's all there is to it, I'm afraid. Uh, the, there's a bit of a rumpus going on at the moment because um, the bread isn't very good. The bread the family wanted to sell at their event isn't up to scratch. There's too much yeast in there, I think. This hasn't worked fully. That's not good enough. Um, I would not be happy buying that. I'd say, oh, yeah, well... I know it's important to the site, but once again, uh, we've got a situation where the flour and the, and the spelt or whatever we've done today has taken over from what we really should be concentrating on. What appears to be happening, as far as I can see, is we're running off on tangents. Are you suggesting that spelt may be a tangent? What we should be concentrating on is getting this farmer's market ready and lots of things for sale and making money. I know they're tired and tense, but I don't want them to slip into their bad old ways. 
Look, no. Right. No, but I'm, no, this is fair enough. I can't it's come with them tomorrow. It's another conversation about flame and flour. Anyway, it's fine. No, it's not it's anyway. It's very good. Just you just because we're mentioning flour, we're talking about getting stocks for your shop. Right. It doesn't okay. Matter. What as that's... long as we haven't got to spend all our time having discussions about flour. Well, I'm sorry. It's part of my job. I'm not having. A, you're not having a discussion about flour. We're okay, having a discussion about flour. Okay. Right. That's fine. Go. I won't have any discussion. Well, you can. You can if you like. But I'm just trying to work out what we're doing, and then send Dad off to do it, so we can get on with what we've got to do. Appropriate. I'm going to go home. I've had enough. Whatever happens, I need them to be ready for their relaunch. Frustration today has been about bread. The quality of the bread, the quality of the flour that's coming out. Uh, if we haven't got a good quality product, then we can't set ourselves up as a high quality site. We'll get there. After a long night, the family's big day is here, and I'm delighted to say, so is their bread. Look at this, it's fab. The first sign that there's been really significant change at Denver Mills. It's important to show that they're becoming a more professional outfit, that they're really thinking about their branding, their face to the world. With food producers coming from all over the county, there's a lot to do to ensure today's event goes without a hit. We've got to sort out where we're going to have the hampers, and... We haven't finished the hampers yet, that's what's worrying me. <laughs> if they can draw a crowd, then this could become a regular fixture, where people come from far and wide to sample the very best of Norfolk's food. All the people's names that are on there need to go in that marquee. It's great marketing, great for their product sales, and should fill their tea room regularly. Right, is this yours, this one? We've about an hour before the official opening of the farmer's market, and uh, we've got a long way to go yet before oh, already. We need some dressed flour for Wendy. Yeah, uh, we haven't got any. Well, none. We haven't got any flour for the baker bakes. I mean, it's just really ironic that of all the things we haven't got, we haven't got any flour. <laughs> Lindsay seems to be running around trying to do everything. I've got two labels for the spell briskets. See if he knows where the side of the gazebo is. Duncan's trying to do that. Lunacy, lunacy. Have you any idea what's going on? Mm. Right. It's round, way round we are now. Um, I'd better see what I can Mom, do. So 7 99 and 9 99 7 99 and, and 9 99 yeah. Never used the price in gum, but it can't be that hard. Yeah, that's rubbish. The family are hoping to take £1,500 today, which is a lot given they only made £7,000 profit last year. So seeing a crowd is encouraging. Smoke after bonfire night, that sort of taste. <laughs> the variety of products is a real draw for adults. From fudge to chilies and coffee to cider. Whilst the kids are entertained with baking courses. Lots of little breadcrumbs, okay? And pony cart rides. My husband is a, is a pork pie nut. Yes, so I'll have one of them. The site really feels like a hub for good food, but to make this a regular occurrence for the family, then it needs to have been profitable for their stallholders. How have you done? Very good. Yes? I think we, we have sold quite a lot. Good, so it's been worth coming. Yes. Well, we've had a good, good afternoon, actually. Good. Which I'm is so very pleasing. pleasing. It's been really nice. Nice setting here as well. I think, that, I think the setting's quite magical, so definitely worth while even. Yeah, we do it again. I wanted to come and support Denver and I'm when really they're trying to do something new and exciting so we've all got to stick together all us food producers and but what they offer their customers is actually sensationally good and as long as they keep that up I think they'll, they'll succeed in the long term. <laughs> this event is only the start but the family did manage to beat their £1,500 target tonight and better still they're no longer ashamed to say they've made money. Yeah, it is about profit, although it sounds like an awful thing. No, I say it sounds like an awful thing to say. I don't, I don't believe that anymore at all. I don't believe that it is an awful thing to say. Of course it's about making profit, because the business won't survive if you don't make profit. 
We've come a very long way in, the, in this last two months. We acknowledge now that we probably would have given up. None of us want that to happen. You've achieved a lot, I think. You've understood how important it is to combine every aspect of the business. I'm very happy with how there's such consistency of branding. Um, I do think that that makes you look much more professional. And I think that's what you needed. I think, you know, you mustn't bury your head in the sand about the financial parts of the business. And I think if there's nothing else that I've reminded you, it's about the fact that, you know, successful businesses are built on the bricks and mortar of making sure that you make a profit on every item you sell. I mean, it's, you know, it's not rocket science, is it? You've got, you know, you've really come a long way and I'm not trying to pretend that it's all going to be plain sailing from no, here no, on no. in, you know. But I do hope that I've a kind of energised you and given you hope for the future. I'm completely <laughs> powered out about it. I know, you're very bullish, darling. Yeah, I'm completely powered out about it. I mean, the boost that you've actually given me personally, for speaking for myself, is massive. For whatever job you do, the people that are paying your wages, they're always your boss. But I think maybe over the last few weeks, they're not so much as my boss as we're a unit trying to, trying to do something. I think we've got a much better chance now than we certainly had before Alex came. And I am looking, you know, I'm looking forward to putting some of the things into practice that she's taught us. We have got a very positive future. We've got a lot of hard work to do. And this is never going to be easy. It's always going to be hard work on a job like this. But uh, whilst we find it rewarding and satisfying, and whilst the public want to come here, they want to buy and eat our products, I can't think of a much better life for him. Six weeks later, and the family's optimism about the future of the mill continues to grow. If this can produce enough to pay the people who work here enough to live and enjoy doing it, what more can you ask for? It was a feeling that we weren't alone anymore, the feeling that there were there was Alex who was interested in our business and who was giving us support and that that has been tremendously useful having that support. I think that taking me out of the windmill and putting me um, back behind my desk means that I've started to use some of my development skills um, and I don't think that I'll forget that now. And that started to make a difference. There are more farmers markets scheduled and a new website to sell hampers nationwide. With regards to my place in the family, in the actual family business, I have definitely got more of a voice and, um, yeah, they listen to me a bit more and they ask my opinions. I think we've all really benefited. I think Duncan's um, felt now that he's in a better position to um, step in and have his voice heard. Well, they've got to since I asked Sari to marry me and she said yes. <laughs> How pleased we are that Alex turned up can best be summarised by a simple fact that I think if she hadn't, we wouldn't still be here. I think it's that simple. I still believe that Denver Mills should still be here at the end of this century, which is what this whole idea was always about. Next Tuesday at 8 on BBC Two, in a new series, the Hairy Bikers kick off their vacation in Norway. Next tonight, space weather powerful enough to destroy our high-tech society. Horizon looks at the threat from solar storms. While over on BBC Three now, looking back at their first few months on the ward, it's the Junior Doctors.